This is Dog playing Tetris, and he's about to become the first person to reach the fabled rebirth screen in Tetris. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is the hardest and final challenge that NES Tetris has to offer, and to understand why this is such a huge accomplishment, we need to rewind to December of 2023. Late last year, there was a race to be the first person to reach the game crash, which is a crash that can happen on NES Tetris starting at level 155 and above due to the score operation taking longer to calculate than it's supposed to. The top two players competing for the crash were Fractal, the classic Tetris world champion of 2023, and Blue Scooty, who placed third. These were two of the best in the entire world. Fractal had been going for the game crash for a while. In fact, back in 2022, he was the first person to reach the glitched colors, which happened starting at level 138 due to a bug. Getting the glitched colors is a feat in and of itself, and since the game crash can happen starting at level 155, just 17 levels after the glitched colors start, getting the crash became the next logical thing for top players to seek as a challenge. There are two questions you might have right now. How do they get the pieces to move so so fast, and why are they holding the controller so funny? And the answer to both is that they're using the rolling technique. Previously in Tetris, there were two techniques for moving pieces, DAS, which stands for Delayed Auto Shift, and Hyper Tapping. DAS is where you hold the D-pad down and the game performs an input for you every 5 frames, and Hyper Tapping is where you mash the button as fast as you can. These were the only strategies for the longest time, and they encountered problems when you reach level 29, also known as the kill screen, where pieces fall at their fastest rate. For DAS players, this level was a death sentence as you couldn't get a long bar all the way to the left before it would hit the bottom, but with hyper tapping, it was possible to barely survive on the kill screen, with some players getting to levels in the low 30s, that is, until rolling was discovered. By placing a hand behind the controller, you can roll your fingers along the back of it to force the button into your thumb, allowing for many more inputs than DAS or hyper tapping. Rolling was discovered by Cheese and it made play on level 29 and beyond a very real possibility possibility, and to prove it, he obliterated the score world record. Once rolling was introduced, it was widely adopted by the community, as not only was getting a long bar to the left now possible, players were also able to get a long bar to the left at stack heights up to 10. So while difficult, surviving on the fastest drop speed was now a reality. With records that were previously thought impossible getting set regularly, Fractal was the first to go for the game crash, getting a deep run all the way to level 87 on December 19th, 2023. But a bad combination of pieces caused the board to build up, and a misdrop unfortunately cost him the attempt. The next day, he had another attempt to get all the way to level 130 before disaster struck as he got a long bar stuck when trying to move it to the left and couldn't recover. Undeterred, Fractal kept streaming attempts, but on December 21st, Blue Scooty would beat him to the punch and became the first person in history to reach the game crash. <gasps> This was huge for the Tetris community, with Scooty's achievement going absolutely viral. And not only would Fractal get a game crash not long after this, but Pixel Andy, Alex T, Tristop, and Miles would all get a game crash of their own in the following months. Which raised one important question, what challenges did the game have left after the crash? Crashing the game isn't guaranteed, as by performing certain actions, you can avoid it, or crash dodge as the community calls it. Since the crash starts being possible at level 155, if you can crash dodge all the way to level 255, then transition one final time, you'll arrive back at level 0, the game's starting level, or the rebirth screen. This is because of a bug with the level counter called underflow, where the data structure used to store the variable for the level can't go any higher. So when it needs to go above its limit, it rolls around to the lowest possible value. Getting to the rebirth screen is easier said than done, however, as there are four major things that make getting there incredibly difficult. The first three are glitches in the game, as once you reach the glitched colors, there are certain color palettes that are incredibly hard to see, which make playing the game very difficult. The second glitch you need to contend with is the super level that lasts for 810 lines. While typical levels transition after 10 line clears, there's a bug when you reach level 235 that causes it to last for over 800, pushing the player's stamina to the absolute limit. The third glitch you'll encounter is the crash itself, and for reasons we'll talk about later, all of the players going for the rebirth screen agreed to play on a version of the game that removed the crash. So when it comes to the rebirth screen, players don't have to worry about a crash ending their game. The final thing players have to deal with, and perhaps the most important, is fatigue, as getting to the rebirth screen takes well over an hour, and this is while playing at the hardest difficulty where a single mistake can mean game over. However, this didn't stop 
stop players from trying, and on March 11th of 2024, one player was about to have the sickest run in Tetris history. The word prodigy can be applied to a lot of players in recent years, and Alex T is certainly one of them. Having been a great hypertapper, he picked up rolling and continued honing his skills, and in 2024, he set a high score record of 9.9 million, 1 million points higher than Pixel Andy's record, but unfortunately for Alex, his run wasn't recorded. People didn't doubt the validity of Alex's score, but without a video, it couldn't be verified, so the next day, he started streaming attempts. His stream starts off like any other, with Alex Alex joking around and getting up to read chat. But things start to get serious when he reaches the kill screen, getting a Tetris, then rolling two long bars to the left. In situations where other players might think they're in trouble, Alex casually narrates his play and lowers the board back to safety, then says he'll start going for Tetrises after he scores 2 million points because he feels like it. However, he keeps shifting the score he'll start going for Tetrises at by 100,000, and it's clear he's just having fun with his chat. Oh, when I, when I hit 2.5, I'm gonna start going for Tetris. At level 104, he does go for a Tetris, and it's almost a disaster, but despite the board being in a dangerous state, he digs his way out and continues the run. Eventually, his score hits 10 million, and he keeps playing. Yes! I think that's 10 mil! And beyond that, he hits the super level, 800 lines of solid green. Never mind. Okay, that's, that's actually hard to see. Deep in the super level, he misdrops an S piece and then a line piece, which opens a double well, but after a nice recovery, he misdrops a T piece, which kills his rebirth run. Despite falling short of the rebirth screen, this was still an insane run, as not only did he smash the score record, but he also became the first person to reach the super level. That being said, he still had about 20 minutes of game left to play, so while this was the closest anyone had come to reaching rebirth, there was still a lot of ground to cover, and on April 4th, Fractal did something incredible. When it came to Rebirth, players had concerns about two things. The fatigue from the super level, and if the charcoal glitched color was something that could be adapted to due to its poor visibility. So what do you suppose Fractal did? Obviously, he set up a game where he started on the super level with the charcoal colors. Throughout the run, he does get into trouble and has to dig himself out, but after 20 minutes, he clears 810 lines, proving not only that the super level is possible, but that it can be done with the hardest glitch color, charcoal. There was a lot of competition around reaching the rebirth screen at this point, and on April 15th, Alex T would break the score record again. After that, things would cool off for a bit, as the classic Tetris World Championships were coming up in June, so players were taking the time to practice instead of going for the rebirth screen. When the tournament rolled around, it saw Alex T in the finals only dropping a single game on his way there, and his opponent in the finals was Dog playing Tetris, a two-time world champion. They played a best of five that went to the fifth game, with Alex T taking the title. He appeared to be unstoppable at this point, and with his new world championship title, it seemed like Rebirth was inevitable, and it was. After the CTWC, Alex would stream attempts sporadically over the summer, but a couple of factors saw him take a step back. First was the burnout he was feeling from viewers only wanting to see Rebirth attempts, and the second was he didn't want to spend all of his free time by himself. So for his own mental health, he took a break after winning the CTWC. With Alex on a hiatus, the grind for Rebirth wasn't over however, as Miles, Blue Scooty, and Dog were all doing attempts over the summer months, but it wasn't easy for any of them. To be a contender for Rebirth, you need to possess incredible stamina as the run lasts for an hour and a half, so wrist pain and fatigue will be factors. As the run progresses, these problems only get worse, and you'll need to deal with the difficult color palettes as well, all while a single mistake can be fatal. But as summer faded and fall began, one player would get on the run of a lifetime, which brings us to the 6th of October. Dog's first few games of the stream were him interacting with chat and topping out on the starting level, but once he locked in, things started getting serious. Upon reaching level 30, he has to dig to recover his board and performs a difficult T-spin to save the stack. At level 50, his stack is a bit uneven, but once again, Dog digs himself out of trouble, and that's the last time you'd see his stack get very high, as he managed it perfectly all the way to the glitched colors. He wouldn't see a stack of much height, 
fight until level 144, but again, he recovers easily. And not even the first charcoal level gives him much trouble, but approaching level 187, his board state started getting out of hand, and he needed to dig. He gets a T-piece, and the best spot to put it is in this opening. However, getting it there is an issue, as it requires only two inputs, and if one of those inputs doesn't register, it's game over. So Dog performs a full roll to get it to the wall, then rolls it back into the stack to slot it into place. The ability to conceptualize this line of play and then execute it on the fly is insane, as Dog only has about half a second from when the piece appears in the next box to it reaching its final spot on the board, and the difficulty was just getting started. During level 211, Dog gets into a dig, but there was another issue. While he has the location of most of the glitch color palettes memorized, he had forgotten what was after this one, and during his dig, the level transitions to charcoal. If the pressure of being in a dig wasn't enough, he was now playing on one of the worst color palettes. But by focusing on the dig, he was able to play through the low visibility colors and save the run. The same situation happens again during level 233. He's in a dig, and the next level is charcoal, but once again he locks in, which brings him to the super level. For the next 810 lines, he would be playing with dark green pieces, and just two minutes in, something disastrous happens. With the rolling technique, the maximum amount of spaces you can let the board height get up to and still get a long bar to the left is 10, with it requiring a perfect 5 tap on the controller to perform. Any higher, and you don't have enough time to move it before it would touch the stack. And when moving a long bar to the left, Dog hangs it one spot too early, leaving him with a 9 high spike. Amazingly, he was able to clear away three rows off the bottom and avoid disaster, and aside from two more times when the stack got a little high, Dog emerges from the super level, putting 30 levels between him and the rebirth screen. From level 237 onward, he doesn't say a single word, in fact, he barely blinks, and with no difficult color palettes left, all he has to do is finish the run. Oh my god! 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 Oh my god, Ash got rebirth! Oh my god! Oh my god! At the time of this video's posting, Dog has been the only person to achieve the rebirth screen, with his run also setting a new score record. And you might be wondering, what did he do after hitting rebirth, and what's next for Tetris achievements? Theoretically, you can play from level 0 all the way to another rebirth, and Dog did continue playing, making it to level 91 before topping out. Which brings us to the future of Tetris challenges. When rolling was first discovered, the score world record was front and center, but as other challenges such as the glitched colors and game crash became popular, the score record became a consolation prize you received for achieving those accomplishments. Now that Rebirth has been hit, the score record is once again a top tier prize, but Dog thinks that other challenges, such as getting a perfect game where you reach 1 million points by only scoring Tetrises, or scoring as high as possible in 39 levels, may become the new thing that players grind for. However, there's one thing we still need to talk about, and that's the crash dodge. As I mentioned earlier, players have been playing on a version of Tetris that removes the crash, as many players consider reaching Rebirth on a vanilla NES cartridge next to impossible and here's why. While avoiding the crash is possible, the requirements for it change from level to level. For example, transitioning into level 155 with a single line clear will crash the game 100% of the time, but on level 156, a single line clear as you transition won't crash the game unless you press down on the d-pad for more than 7 frames. For some levels, you can toggle the next piece box to save your run from crashing, but this doesn't always work, and sometimes, regardless of how well you play, you'll be forced to clear lines that will crash the game, or have a high chance of crashing. Since the strategy on the kill screen is to survive instead of setting up specific line clears. On top of this, the technique where you need to press down for more or less than 7 frames is incredibly difficult to perform given how you need to hold the controller for rolling, as you don't have another finger to press on the d-pad with, not to mention pressing it for less than 7 frames, and for this reason, Dog thinks that this puts a crash dodge out of the realm of possibility. And who knows, maybe I'll be making a video about the crash dodge in the future. But for now, Dog has achieved the first and only rebirth screen, which will likely remain as the greatest achievement in Tetris history. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next exciting episode of Abyssoft Z.